here. Remember the plan? Member Renison? Here. Member Selman? Here. Member Zay? Here. All right. We have a quorum. Um, I move to approve the minutes of the Legislative and Governmental Affairs Committee of regular meeting and from Tuesday, January 25th, 2022. So moved. Second right. by Selman. Um, all in favor? Aye. Any no? Any nays? All right, that passes. Um, thank you all for coming. I'm so glad we're doing this earlier in the day so we can all get out, hopefully, and get some lunch. Um, I'd like to thank Member Selman for asking for more information about the animal forfeiture legislation, which is House Bill 4641. And um, somebody who knows all about it is our state attorney, Alyssa Rabolinsky. And in fact, she spent so many hours on it, she won an award. So Alyssa, if you would come up and stand before the committee and tell us all about the animal forfeiture legislation and your um, Thank you. Uh, thank you everyone for having me here today. I appreciate it. Um, so we could talk about the bill. Um, first off, my name is Alyssa Radulinski. I'm assistant state's attorney here at the state's attorney's office. I'm currently assigned to the felony unit in our gangs unit. Um, I also am part of the DuPage County Fire Investigative Task Force. So this all kind of started with uh, one of the fires that I was out at was at the kennel, the kennel fire in West Chicago in 2019. Um, this year, uh, at the end of this month, I will be receiving an award from the Animal Legal Defense Fund. I was named one of the 2022 top 10 animal defenders uh, in the country based on not just my work with this uh, legislative session, but cases that I've prosecuted and cases that we investigated um, and charged. Next slide, please. Uh, all right, so currently there's a statute in Illinois that deals specifically with pretrial forfeiture of animals, as well as forfeiture and bans of animals after conviction. So prior to the start of the trial, our office, as well as animal control, has the ability to petition the court to try and forfeit animals after an arrest is made or a defendant is charged with various offenses under the Humane Care for Animals Act, which I'll go over which ones apply to that. This includes the animal or animals who are the subject of the violation of the Humane, uh, the Humane Care for Animals Act, as well as if that offender possesses any other animals or harbors any other animals. Next slide, please. <coughs> the offenses for which our office or animal control can petition the court include the following. Animal cruelty, aggravated animal cruelty, animal torture, animals in entertainment, and confinement in a motor vehicle. Next slide, please. There are offenses for which the petition for forfeiture of animals prior to trial is not available. They are as follows. Violation of owner's duties, <coughs> depiction of animal cruelty, teasing, striking, or tampering with a police dog, injuring or killing police animals, service animals, accelerant detection dogs or search and rescue dogs, poisoning prohibited and guide or adhering to support dogs. And just to give you guys a quick rundown, violation of owner's duties includes someone who doesn't provide sufficient quantity of good quality, wholesome food and water or adequate shelter, veterinary care when needed to prevent suffering, humane care and treatment or improperly tether the animals. Additionally, with uh, a, a depiction of animal cruelty, that's if someone depicts some sort of item of animal cruelty, for example, animal torture videos, animal bestiality videos or photos, things of those sorts. And then when it comes to the teasing or tampering with police or service animals, uh, that's as it sounds, but that also includes if you kill or injure a service animal. Poisoning prohibited is that no person may poison or cause to be poisoned any sort of dog or domestic animal. And then the guide or hearing support dogs, that's if someone willfully or maliciously annoys, taunts, teases, harasses, torments, beats, or strikes someone's guide, hearing, or support dog, or maliciously tortures, injures, or kills a guide, or hearing, or support dog, or permits a dog that is owned or harbored or controlled by the person to cause injury or the death of someone's guide or hearing dog. What <laughs> love you. In Illinois, the statute regarding the court's ability to impose a ban or forfeiture of an animal after a criminal offense is disposed only applies to the specific 
criminal offenses in the Humane Care for Animals Act. This includes the following, animal cruelty, aggravated animal cruelty, animal torture, animals and entertainment, confinement and motor vehicle. And then the offenses to which the ban or forfeiture is not applicable to includes the following. So for the violation of owner's duties, you can get court supervision. So if you get court supervision, the judge can't give the ban uh, or forfeiture. Depiction of animal cruelty, the teasing, striking, the injuring, the police animals, poisoning prohibited, or the guide hearing, or support dogs. And as I just said, in Illinois, the statute regarding the court's ability to impose the ban or forfeiture only applies when a defendant is convicted, and that is the operative word, convicted. Therefore, when a defendant receives court supervision, the court cannot impose a ban or forfeiture of animals. Court supervision is eligible for the following offenses. Violation of owner's duties, teasing, striking, or tampering with a police dog, poisoning prohibited, confinement in a motor vehicle, and then if you torment or strike someone's guy hearing or support dogs. So why does this matter? In Illinois, the language of the statute is not clear whether a court can impose a lifetime ban for possessing animals or whether that ban can be longer than the sentence given by the court. Typically, court sentences here in DuPage are two years. Currently, there's no enforcement for if a person is possessing an animal when there is a court-ordered ban. So if a court does order a ban, there's no enforcement that the animal control or local law enforcement can take. Consequently, there's no, there's no avenue of recourse for animal control, local police department to secure the animal illegally possessed, forfeit that animal, and then find it a new loving home. Without House Bill 4641 for certain offenses, Animals will remain with their abuser or owner who abused other animals during the pendency of the criminal court case. Without House Bill 4641, after a disposition for certain offenses, animals will remain with their abuser or owner who abused other animals. Without the House Bill for certain offenses, unless a defendant is convicted, the animals will, will remain with their abuser or owner who abused other animals. The effect in DuPage County. Recently, at a sentencing hearing, the people requested a lifetime ban on a defendant for possessing companion animals. And that's the People versus Garrett Mercado case, which is the, the kettle fire, which I will talk about a little bit later. The court did not believe it had the ability to do so based on the law as written. At a sentencing hearing on an aggravated animal, to, animal cruelty matter, the court stated the following. It is truly unfortunate that people can mistreat an animal like this. The lack of concern for animals is shocking and appalling. I pray to God you never have another companion animal. The court did not have the ability to impose a lifetime ban based on the laws written. And this is why uh, we are trying to obviously remedy what the law does not provide for. Okay, so before we continue, the next slides are from disposed of cases from DuPage County. I am going to warn you, I consider them to be graphic. They do depict animal abuse. So obviously, if you put your head down or turn away, there's no shame in that because some of these pictures um, are actually very disturbing. Okay, the West Chicago Kennel Fire, People versus Mercado. He was charged with violation of owner's duties charges and animal cruelty. He was found guilty in 2021. He's currently sentenced. We're just going to go through some of the pictures. So this is outside. There was outside kennels in addition to the indoor kennel.
So was there abuse going on in, at the kennel? Because I mean, the fire alone isn't the owner's fault, obviously. Fire could happen in my home and my animals would die. Yeah, but, there's, but there was abuse and, and what was what were the charges then? Yeah, so- Because the fire is an accident that couldn't be helped, but- Right, so the defendant was not only found guilty, um, he was found guilty specific to abuse to a couple other animals mm -hmm. prior to the fire, which I actually will have a couple slides about uh, Magoo. Mm -hmm. And then if you wouldn't mind pausing this slide. So this slide, do you, do you see the, what looks like a tether? It's like a chain. It's on the upper right-hand corner. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. one of the counts Gary Mercado was found guilty of, there's actually a dog attached to that chain. And the firefighters testified that it was so tough that that dog would have even been able to lay down. Oh. And it was tethered like that for at a bare minimum of five hours based on the timeline from the investigation. And that dog died in the fire because it obviously couldn't get out. And firefighters recovered it from underneath all that debris and then untethered it so it could you know, properly be buried or cremated. But that was the dog Coco who was uh, one of the specific charges that Garrett was found guilty of. And then we can pause, we can go back one. So Magoo, this is one of the other counts Garrett Mercado was found guilty of. Magoo was a dog that had stayed at the kennel. Um, Magoo, this is what he looks like before he went to the kennel. Um, and the pictures that we'll show you afterwards, Magoo came back to the rescue. Uh, he stayed at the kennel for approximately five weeks. When he came back, he lost 11 pounds, had punctures, abrasions, lacerations, contracted hookworm, and experienced muscle wasting. So here he is after being at the kennel. Do these dogs have owners? I mean, these people, you know. So Magoo was a rescue dog. Magoo actually now does have a home. Let's do your pause there. So Magoo now has a home um, and he's doing quite well. We have pictures from uh, how he's doing now, but at the time he was part of a rescue, a dog rescue, and he had been sent to the kennel because Garrett Mercado did animal trainings, and so he was sent there for animal training, and that's what happened. Additionally, there was another specific instance of animal abuse that he was found guilty of that occurred before the fire. That was a puppy named Molly, and there was a video of Molly in a cage and the cage that molly was in was so small that the puppy couldn't have even stood up and there was a video of that uh, this is a different case this is a case that was disposed of in november of 2021 um, this is a one-year-old husky and as you can see hunter only weighs 28 pounds when hunter was uh surrendered to the animal control and animal control investigated it and eventually charged uh, the defendant. And this is now what Hunter looks like. Help. Um, so those are gonna be it for my pictures, but there's a couple other case studies that I did wanna make all of you aware of. Uh, in 2019, there was an animal cruelty case where the defendant pled guilty, um, 19CM1459, where in the animal cruelty, it occurred on January, excuse me, on June 29th, 2019 at 1.55 p.m. It was 90 degrees outside. Lombard officers were called and observed a dog in distress. The officers got the dog out of the car. The dog was panting, not moving, and had a purple tongue. The owner was not around the car at that time. The officers took the dog to the vet, where the dog died from heat stroke, and that dog was Mona, a terrier dog. That defendant has finished his two-year sentence, so as of right now, He's now free to own um, animals again. In 2013, there was a case that was in the news, 13 p.m. 1620, where the accused pled guilty to later sexually abusing a peacock. He admitted to digitally penetrating the peacock for sexual arousal. 
and the peacock was later found dead in his garage. His sentence is complete, so he now can own animals again. There's a case that pled guilty in November of this year. That was People versus Andre Norris, 20 CF 824, aggravated animal cruelty. Uh, the co-defendant's case is still pending. He received three years in the Department of Corrections, but once he's out of the Department of Corrections, he will not have ownership restrictions. In that case, Naperville officers and animal control responded to a trail area in reference to a disposed dead German Shepherd. That German Shepherd was later determined to be owned for and cared by the defendants. He was left wrapped in a bed sheet in a storage type container in a forest area near a drainage ditch. He weighed approximately 20 pounds when he should have weighed about 70. A dog necropsy was done on Meliodas. And his cause of death was canine parvovirus. Additionally, he had severe depletion of bone marrow fat storage. The typical bone marrow fat storage for a dog is 59.4%. His was 0.9. Additionally, it indicated prolonged protein, calorie, malnutrition, and starvation. Additionally, the dog had uh, bro Romatidulion, which is a second generation anticoagulant rodenticide with increased potency, prolonged duration of action. Through that investigation, it was learned that those two individuals owned two other dogs, Bubba and Scooby. Scooby was found in March during the execution of a search warrant. Scooby was in a rusted dog crate, which had animal feces, blood, and urine. He was taken to the emergency vet. Scooby was a German Shepherd Hound mix, weighed approximately 20 pounds, could not walk, had massive sores, and was severely starved, had feces stuck in his fur, as well as other, um, as well as other sores across his body, his body. He now weighs 67 pounds, which is more appropriate. And the last dog, Bubba, who was a corgi, was found left in a ditch wrapped in a sheet. Bubba uh, had an necropsy done, and Bubba was severely underweight, minimal fat stores, had serous atrophy of fat, and heptic atrophy, both of which indicate prolonged periods of undernutrition, and that the likely cause of that animal's death was starvation. Uh, additionally, there is a 2020 CF case where the indictment alleges that the defendant caused rib fractures, a fractured eye socket, displaced teeth um, to a seven-year-old Shih Tzu named Bella. Additionally, a press release from our office indicates that the defendant relayed that he whipped her in the mouth five times with a belt. And then uh, there in 20, there's a 21 CM763 where someone's charged with animal cruelty where it alleges that the defendant struck a dog in the face with an open hand twice in the face. Um, this is important, not just for the reason that I, I just previously said, but additionally, um, in case members of this board aren't aware, not only is it important to get these dogs and animals away from their abusers because they have no voice, but I think it's important to note that there is a well-documented link between cruelty to animals as well as that people who are cruel to animals are cruel to humans as well. It, uh, studies have shown that animal abusers are in fact five times as likely to also harm other humans if they harm animals. A study in 2013 that was published found that 43% of those who commit school massacres also committed acts of cruelty to animals, generally against cats and dogs. A 1983 study noted that animal abuse is found in 88% of homes in which physical child abuse was being investigated. And lastly, a 2017 study showed that 89% of women who had companion animals during an abusive relationship reported that their animals were threatened, harmed, or killed by their abusive partner. Uh, members of this board, I think it goes without saying that all of you know that you are the gold standard of local governments, which is why your support to aid in the hopeful passing of this bill means so much to, to our office and obviously to all the animals and the companion animals that unfortunately don't have a voice and then unfortunately are being abused even in this county here um, at DuPage. So with that, if any of you have any questions, I would love to answer any questions, questions you have.
Deborah Selman. I just want to thank you for this really in-depth presentation, even if I think all of us are probably going home and hugging our pets when we get there. Um, I think it helps us understand why this is so important. I really didn't understand the two-year dis distinction and how you couldn't add penalties on top of it to prevent crimes in the future. So I really want to thank you not only for the presentation, but also your award winning year. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question. Um, so, yes, um, oh, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Jumping in there. Um, so, a lifetime ban on owning pets, I mean, does that involve like a whole other level of bureaucracy in terms of like how, how is that anyone ever going to know there's lifetime ban? So, obviously, that's court ordered and an entry. So, that way, um, unfortunately, it's hard because it's not like a national registry. So, in someone's criminal history, Law enforcement will be able to see that you're, you know, possibly have been convicted or received court supervision for a particular offense. And, you know, unfortunately, it'll be on those officers to see if that person was ordered by the court to have that ban. Um, so that's the only way that they'll be able to know, see if there is one. Um, and then right now, the statute that the amendment that we wrote to the statute includes enforcement because before, for example, if you were banned from having an animal, there's nothing law enforcement can do. Whereas now the statute, we have that it's an automatic forfeiture of any of the animals that you're caught possessing, um, as well as possible indirect criminal contempt or indirect civil contempt with a max of 90 days jail and a $2,500 fine. But you're correct, there's unfortunately no registry. It would be um, on animal control for law enforcement officers to follow up and see what the disposition of that particular offense is. Thank you. Other questions? No, Robuchelski. Are there enhanced penalties? So if the guy has this ban and he comes back in, is it subject to contempt of court or is it an aggravated case the next time around because he already had a ban of this sort or not? So it would be subject to the either criminal or civil contempt, whichever way our office would choose to file it with a maximum of 90 days in jail and the $2,500 fine and the automatic forfeiture of the animals that you're possessing or harboring. Other questions? I, what does entertainment of animals mean? Yeah, so the entertainment of animals is uh, that's involving animals in entertainment. So the, the traveling zoos or right. zoo animals. And so that was actually, uh, I believe it was the Animal Humane Society got that bill enacted. So that's basically for the appropriate treatment of animals that you have in zoos or the traveling zoos or the petting zoos. So it's basically involving making sure that you're treating them fairly, that you're not abusing them, that you're not inappropriately treating those animals. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. I, I was thinking of something, something else, but um, like for example, Pride Fest, we had a petting zoo there with some exotic animals. They were treated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, it's a bill basically to make sure that those animals are not Gotcha. Alyssa, thank you so much for the presentation and thank you for being the voice of animals. Thank you so much for really, really allowing me to come talk to you. I appreciate it. And obviously, so I put on the last slide my email and my direct extension at the state attorney's office. And if you have questions in the interim, please reach out to me. Thank you everyone for having me today. Thank you so much. Let me start briefly. Yes. Um, so those you probably don't know this members of the board, but I also handle the state attorney's legislative agenda. I help draft and work on bills and help get bills passed like Alyssa's. Any year we'll have somewhere between 15 to 20 suggestions from our state's attorneys. Uh, the state's attorney takes the position that in order to be a zealous advocate, we need to see what laws are working or what laws aren't. We get those from the members of our uh, from the members of our community and members of our office who work in the trenches with these cases. Um, we, we have a separate legislative agenda in the county. Oftentimes we have bills that frankly wouldn't interest the county very much, I imagine. Um, and oftentimes we have ones where I think the board has a very large amount of interest. I regret that I wasn't able to be here at your last meeting to give you an update or a presentation on this sort of thing. So I do apologize for that. Um, and I do wanna say that if there's, I, when I bring bills to the attention of Cheryl or other members of the board, it's because I think you have a, an interest in them. Um, and the kind of state's attorney's office really does wanna work with the board on making sure that important bills that meet our interests and your interests pass and are well represented. Does the state's attorney's office have their own lobbyists? Uh, we share, we share a lobbyist with the county. Uh, you, we have Scott Marquardt and he okay. works with Chip Humes. Um, and I want to say I, I don't have a hard number, but in, I've only been doing the legislative uh, 
agenda for the last five years. I, we passed dozens of bills impacting elder abuse, uh, changing the Open Meetings Act to get rid of the, uh, the black hole that happens with records when you eliminate a uh, unit of government. Uh, from everything from good governance resources to uh, tweaking penalties and making sure that obviously here people that abuse animals uh, aren't able to do so in the future. Thank you. Oh, members, sir. Just to make, would you like to um, make a presentation at the next meeting about the legislative? Um, honestly, we we have a, a few bills that I think are moving. This is one of them right, oh, now. right now. I I tend to focus my time on making sure that we are advertising the bills that are likely to make major inroads. Um, we all like to be honest. Uh, there's a lot of things going on in Springfield, and oftentimes some bills move faster than others, and some are going to be more successful than others. But uh, again, it's important, I think, for our office to be zealous advocates of the law to make sure that it's working the way it should be. Perfect. Member Chapman. Yeah, just, just for clarification on sharing the lobbyists, because you have your own contract with them, so it's not really sharing the lobbyists. Well, you have the same contract. lobbyists, have, sorry. Yeah, so just they have gotcha. to pay them separately. Gotcha. So, yeah, they gotcha. thank you. Though. Yeah. And they also, um, like, they work through, Mr. Berlin's very active in the Illinois State's Attorneys Association. Mm -hmm. So a lot of their bills deal with sentencing or just, we look for bills like this that kind of cross over into like animals or mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the sheriff, he works for the sheriff's association, the right. clerk right. works for the clerk. And some of the right. things are really technical. And because we only look at maybe 25, 30 bills, if we put all of the different bills on, we'd have over a hundred. And I'm always looking for the consensus and the ones that really impact the daily operations. That's my lens for looking at things. Gotcha. But gotcha. And sometimes we'll introduce a bill. To, like last year, we introduced a bill to fix an issue with dead trees and undedicated plant right of ways, which, I, while you may enjoy a fine nap in the afternoons, <laughs> uh, might be a little bit dry and uninteresting, <laughs> but very important from a legal standpoint. Right, right, right. So let me ask. Um, the state's attorney for this committee is Nick, right? Yes. So Nick, let me ask you this. I'd like to make a motion to approve the state's, uh, to approve the um, bill list um, and then have, get a second and then have Cheryl go through the bill list. But members, they called me yesterday with another bill that he'd like to consider. Oh no. They, so could I make a motion? Have no. To wait. Yeah, no, because we didn't publish it. Love to wait so I'm week. not looking for it today. We can do it at the next. I thought you wanted to discuss part of the bill. I'm going to discuss it and then if we can put it on the next agenda, that'd be perfect. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. we didn't we'll do, do that we'll enough time. We'll talk about the, the yeah. Yeah. That are new to this. All right, so I will make a motion now to uh, approve the draft bill list that you all received a copy of. Can I get a second? Second. Okay. Second by Member Chaplin. All in favor say aye. Aye. Oh, I'm sorry. No. Discussion. Discussion. Cheryl. Well, I just wanted to say, um, Jason's got the online General Assembly website. If you want to see the full text, I tried to send it out Wednesday, but I didn't want to copy all the 11 bills. And I think almost all the bills on this list, this committee has seen before. I know we have some new members, but you know, it's increasing the share of LGDF, which is really moving this year. We think we can get 8%. We're excited about that. I'm working closely with page makers and managers. The unfunded mandates, uh, the housing discrimination, that was a bill that got through one chamber last year and this committee endorsed it. So it's the same language as last year. Um, Joy Hens is here. Environmental committee has talked a lot about um, the carpet recycling and the packaging. I think uh, the environmental committee put in three thousand dollars to be part of this packaging um, working group. So those are the environmental bills that are on here. Um, and then the only one I other wanted to highlight, of course, the puppy mill ban. They're not giving up on that. We're making great progress, but that's kind of tied in with um, the state's attorney's bill on animal cruelty. We passed it last year. I mean, the legislature passed it last Correct. year. They're just trying to. And now they're it. trying to. Um, to re revisit it, it, right? And actually, uh, Brian, remember Kajuski told me yesterday at a phone call that um, it's going to be called tomorrow, and there are, are seven people on the committee and five are voting to no. So it's looking good for us. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, absolutely. Um, and then the ETSB bill, Linda Zoran might be on, and I put an additional attachment in there. Um, this is some language they need um, from Member Schwarzy and Linda that addresses um, some different issues that have come up with the ETSB statute. And then uh, the last one is a bill that um, Senator Curran has. Um, we all know the importance of bike paths and sidewalks. And there was a bill that was passed last year 
that when there's a municipal, uh, when there's a state IDOT project near a municipality within a mile, they will look at funding, you know, a bike path or a sidewalk. They took out urban area, which would include unincorporated areas before the bill was signed in the last chamber. So we want to put that back in there because we have unincorporated areas that need sidewalks, right. as we know. So if IDOT's within a mile doing a project, Chris Schneider can say, hey, because, you know, I, I go down Roosevelt Road every day. There's not a sidewalk mm -hmm. for a big portion, which is why I can't walk to work. Not that I would anyway, but um, <laughs> maybe I would if there was a sidewalk. <laughs> so, yeah, so, I mean, that's, that's a good example. Right. You know, it goes right. through some unincorporated areas. So we we want equal footing with municipalities, which we're always seem like we're trying to get. But right. I try not to put anything that you weren't familiar with on our initial And as list. you know, we've talked about this. This is a shortened session this time. It's right. wrapping up in April. Um, but this is a living, breathing document where we can approve it today and then add other initiatives. Right, it'll be more bill form and then stuff I can't proceed. Right. So we've got a motion and a second. All in favor of this bill list? Aye. 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 Any nays? All right, it passes. And then Member Zay has, well, any old business? All right, Member Zay has some new business. I put this uh, bill on your, on your seat here. It's Senate Bill 3691. Uh, this amends the Water Act of 1985. Uh, the DuPage Water Commission was established under that act. Uh, it sets up the uh, districts and how they are represented. Obviously, we have six districts on the Water Commission, six from the municipalities, six from the county, and then a chairman is appointed by the county. Well, as we are expanding, uh, we signed it up and we'll, we have a letter of intent with Montgomery, Oswego, and Yorkville to join the commission. It's a $90 million type project with them, but they wanted representation on the board. We don't have a, uh, any way to do that. So what we're doing on this, and the mayor's agreed that the Water Commission has agreed, we're creating a seventh district, which is for municipalities, anybody who takes water outside of DuPage County. So only be once, it doesn't matter how many people join, it could be these three, we have other people that have talked to us, they would all be into this. Uh, again, it will be the same way that those municipalities in that seventh district would pick their representative, but the county board, DuPage County Board, would pick the seventh representative from someone in that area. So we would still have control of it. And that's what they were asking you to get into this. It's a huge project. Um, obviously, water out there, we've been dealing with them for four and a half, five years. Their wells are going dry, they're getting bigger. So it's a big project. The buy-in alone for them to join the commission is $20 million. So it's a, it's a good project. Uh, this bill is being sponsored by Senator Holmes. Uh, Senator Curran is going to co-sponsor. It looks like every DuPage legislator is going to get on, uh, state rep and state senator. And Montgomery, Oswego, and Yorkville's uh, reps and senators are going to get it also. And they say they, they're they so caught up out there. There's like They have like five senators and eight representatives or something. It's crazy. So they're all on board too. But this was a major point. They wanted representation to join the commission. And so we felt this was the fairest way to do it. But we have to amend the act. And there's been a negotiation to go through it. So I don't know if this hasn't been posted, has it? It's not filed yet, the amendment. Okay, filed, questions so. for members A? No, members just Chevron? good job, Jim, because that's so important to get that water out to the um, people that need it. And it's great for the Water Commission. So i um, glad to see that all taking place. And, it, and, and they don't, they and they don't do join the commission until they start taking water. Yes, absolutely. So great, great. So and that's probably coming. six, seven years now. Member Selman? Thank you. Just our, we're we're not worried about filling these roles, right? I know obviously we have times on the commissions we're begging people. This we think this is implementable for. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. It'll be. And you said they take water, so that might be five or Black six years, and it still runs through the county board, right? Right. Yeah. Our our appointment runs through the county board. Yeah, we keep control of it. And, and they did appointed? change. We did change one thing. It said the chairperson never said it has to be a resident of the home county. Yeah. Which is nice. us. Yeah. So we don't. <laughs> And I think people were concerned that we continue with more districts. No, if it's yep. like they said, well, what if Aurora joined? Well, Aurora has part of they're part of DuPage County, so they would right. be in District yep. 5. Right. You know, other areas would join, they would go in. It's just for people that are completely outside of the county. Right. Which we have, we're talking to Romeoville. It could be Romeoville could also join. So it's different areas. We just want to set this up. And it, this was kind of a deal breaker for them. So mm -hmm. they had other options. So, I mean, again. We're good stewards of water. We just want to get this done. 
I don't know if you guys have heard about Joliet's water problem. They, they're kind of running out of water. So they they had a big debate about where they're going to get their water. And I think in the end, they decided like Michigan water, but it's going to cost millions to get it to oh, yeah. them. And um, yeah, we were running out of time. We were part of that original discussion about bringing them water. After working with them for a while, I thought it was just too big for the DuPage Water Commission. It would probably hurt us ultimately. That's almost a billion dollar project to run water from the city of Chicago to to Joliet. And that's great. Joliet, I mean, they're going to spend a billion dollars. They're about 35 million gallons a day. That's what they're estimating. Mm -hmm. DuPage, we're at 75 million a day. And with this, we'll be around 85. Wow. So we're the we're so the largest what we're the largest supplier for the city of Chicago and second largest in the state. Wow. Oh, and so are, we're going to do Jim's because then I have another one I'd like. Yeah, I'm done. I just um, I yeah, appreciate like it. It was too late to get it on. For next week. Yeah. And, yeah, and I would like to put on the agenda for next week House Bill 4640 to support it. It's important that we do. Discussion? Well, discussion to support it. You want to on discussion to support yeah. it? Yeah. Health department. Um, yes. Yeah. Like, they had sent that memo. Like, I think that would probably. Yeah, Cheryl, yeah. could we invite um, the health department to come and explain HB 4640 for next legislative meeting? Is that okay? I like that idea. Yeah, I do too. Uh, although I don't know when they're calling it. What if they call it between now and two weeks? Well, then we take it off. Then we take it off. They're calling right. it tomorrow. So. Calling it tomorrow. Well, they're calling yeah, it tomorrow. If it, if it passes, then no worries. But if it doesn't, then we'll add it out. Sounds good. Other new business. And maybe I should just say this doesn't go to county board. This the legislative committee. Because of the timing, right. the policy document does, but the bill is is, is here. So yeah, and so it just expands all the time. I mean, we have more supports. Yeah. We have, I mean, it's more Absolutely. defense than anything else. Yeah, yeah. I would say eighty percent what we do on Springfield State House. Quite frankly, mm -hmm. but for the next meeting, forty six forty, and then the Senate bill. Okay. Yes, yeah. and then there'll probably be some other ones. But I'll good talk to you about it when Perfect. we develop that list. Okay. All right, other new business. All right, I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays?